music I listen to doesn't affect me because I know it's just music. I think music that you listen to doesn't really affect your life. It's pretty trivial, you know. Like, you know, not like, oh, go out there and do what they tell, go out there and do what they tell me to do. They're not, you know, enforcing anything on you. They're just saying how they believe. Because they're just doing their life as long as you keep living your life and just listen to the music. That's all it is. Listen and hearing it. You ain't got to do what they do. I don't. I just like, I was like, sitting back and listen to music, you know, it don't affect me really. You know, I like to listen to it, but I don't, you know, base myself on what someone said. I think that all this controversy is like useless. You know, it's just a song. It's just music, you know? I believe that. Music and vibrations are the basis of everything. They pervade everything. Human consciousness is reflected by them. Atoms are vibrations between positive and negative forces. Some very subtle, some complex, but it's all music. Popular music's young fans may want to insist that it's all just music, that the songs they listen to and the videos they watch are not having any real impact on their lives. But how does that line up with the opinions of those who actually make, study, and promote the music? The music comes to people on a subconscious level. It gets right to the core, and it has a way of transforming you. And songs, oh my God, songs so powerful that you are forever changed. You know, people say that music can change the world, and it really can. Music works in mysterious ways, you know, I mean, once it goes in, you have really no say about what it does to you. The music is, is our weapon. We also promote the idea of unification between the body and the spirit. Music is a complete ocean. They hit one note, every hair in your body is going to stand up. And then you feel like you, you, you just made love or you just touched God's feet or both at the same time. I was 19 years old when I first saw the Rolling Stones. They've rocked my ass off. They've inspired me in word and deeds. From the first instantly recognizable chords, it grabs you hard, it goes to your gut, your muscles twitch, and it's deep in your soul. Rock and roll. It's an intense force. It can move mountains, stir up love affairs, and encourage revolution. Look at this. You're just amazed by the power of it. And I was also aware that you could just say, kill. And you know, just somehow this surge would happen. Funny thing about people, Gene Simmons can on the one hand talk about this power to evoke this surge, and on the other hand, spend his life defending rock music as a harmless diversion, as just a way of letting off steam and having fun. In the same way, Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers can in the same sentence talk about music's tremendous power to influence people in positive ways. You know, music is made to create beauty in the world. You know, right. there's, there's always need for more beauty in the world and that's what music is. It you know, makes people happy, it gives people something creative to and, focus and on. Things at Woodstock were While maintaining, as we saw earlier, that it couldn't possibly have any negative effect on its listeners. You know, I thought that was ludicrous. You know, I thought the media was, was groping for something. Thank you, sir. Music is a magical gift. At the 2000 Grammy Awards, Recording Academy President Michael Green echoed Kiedis when he gushed about music's power to help people while denying that it could ever provoke to harm. Enhance the spatial intelligence in newborns and let's not forget that the arts are a compelling solution to teen violence. They're certainly not the cause of it. Tonight... A year later, this doublespeak was turned on its head with the controversial performance and triple Grammy nomination of raunch rapper Eminem. Suddenly, practically every liberal women's and homosexual support group in America was up in arms because of his music's potential to affect behavior, to encourage violence and hatred. My words are like a dagger with a jagged edge. It'll stab you in the head, whether you're a fag or less. Is that a homosex, a map, or a trans vest? Pants a dress, hate facts, the answer's yes. Homophobic. But what's the big deal if it's only music? 
didn't anyone listen to Mr. Green the year before? Teen violence. They're certainly not the cause of it. No one was more vocal in his defense of rock music than Frank Zappa, one of the most innovative and influential musicians and composers of the contemporary era. From interviews, to books, to his testimony before Congress, Zappa has insisted again and again, music is only music. It can't hurt anybody. And yet, in an article he wrote for Life magazine, Zappa noted Rock's rather incredible power when he quoted Hal Zeiger, one of the music industry's first big promoters. I realized that this music got through to the youngsters because the big beat matched the great rhythms of the human body. I knew there was nothing that anyone could do to knock that out of them, that they would carry this with them the rest of their lives. Zappa further observed, the ways in which sound affects the human organism are myriad and subtle. The loud sounds and bright lights of today are tremendous indoctrination tools. Well, one might wonder how a tremendous tool for indoctrination that operates in myriad and subtle ways and will be carried with us for the rest of our lives can be only music. But leaving that alone, these types of observations by both musicians and people who work in and around the industry leave little doubt as to music's incredible power over its audience. Virtuoso guitarist Eddie Van Halen rightly observed, music really is the universal language. It really does have the power to heal. We've had people who hallucinated. We've had people become violent for no apparent reason and not understand why. Music is very powerful and it doesn't have to be a recognizable form. The power in and of itself of any sound is enough, which release specific chemicals in the brain and body in order to alter the state of consciousness. Renowned musicologist David Tame agrees. Music is the language of languages, he wrote in The Secret Power of Music. It can be said that of all the arts, there is none that more powerfully moves and changes the consciousness. Tori Amos echoed this observation when she stated, music is the most powerful medium in the world because of the frequencies. You're hitting places and people that remind them that they're more than just this functional being. The artist, once again known as Prince, gave his perspective on the power of these frequencies when he told an interviewer, the other night I went to a club and I watched the DJ control the entire room. Even politicians can't do that. Incredibly, given his own history of X-rated songs, he went on to reflect on the power of lyrics. I watched the DJ reach for the new album by B.I.G. and put it on, and the crowd went crazy. I asked him, do you know what he's saying in those lyrics? He said he didn't know. Then he tried to tell me he wasn't playing it for the lyrics, that for him it's all about the beat. But it's affecting people. Everything we put out there is affecting people. The message matters, my brother. Weighing her own influence as a musician against that of being an actor, Courtney Love admitted that there was a more bourgeois respectability to acting, but Meryl Streep doesn't know the sublime pleasure of standing in front of 10,000 people and making them do whatever you want. Superstar Jimi Hendrix noted another, perhaps more sobering aspect of this power. After describing how central music was to his life, to the point of functioning as a type of electronic church, he went on to tell Life magazine, you hypnotize people to where they go right back to their natural state. And when you get people at their weakest point, you can preach into their subconscious what we want to say. <laughs> 